All right, good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. This is going to be a video community experiences number three. And um, actually, I'm actually digressing off the course here just for a second while I'm still on course. Uh, this video that I'm doing now should be probably listed six or seven, but I'm going to do it now since it's fresh in my, in my heart. I did a video earlier uh, on the Pastor Dow channel explaining how that um there you know the uh, onion farmers out in california as well as those who are doing produce are having a very difficult time um finding labor since a lot of the deportation and a lot of fear of the immigrants um and, and then worrying about ice officials or the government coming out and actually coming on their farms and deporting them and uh, and also levying a heavy fine against those businesses well, I started thinking, I made a statement in that video, and then a thought came through my, to my mind, and I said, wow, $35 an hour to be out in the field picking onions? Man, I thought about that, you know, and I thought, I said, man, because I, then I started thinking again, and I said this, I have well over 20 years experience of living and dealing with multicultural people different ethnic backgrounds and so I can pretty much tell you I can sense I can do I can uh, tell when someone's offended I can tell you a whole bunch of things about a lot of people uh, just because I do not communicate and let me say this again because if I say it once to say it a thousand times just because I do not communicate does not mean I do not know what's going on actually what I'm doing I'm watching to see what posture you're going to adopt what position you're going to take and predicated on what you are doing up here in your mind and in your lifestyle and your labor determines how I'm going to react to you. I thought about it. I said, hmm, one of the bros did the math, $45 an hour. I thought about, man, that's $1,200 um, in a week if you was to go out there and work. Of that and of course, when my mindset, uh, most of you know that I have this community and other communities I'm, I am helping develop along with the labor of the brother. But I thought my mindset from the very inception, when I first moved to this community, has always been about the whole, regardless of other people who started that way. At least they say that their mind was about the whole, and then along the way, they become offended. Uh, they become self-centered, self-focused, and self-absorbed. Uh, most people forget about the sacrifices that have already been made prior to individuals coming to the community. For instance, I was here to break ground. And there's been other brothers and sisters to come here and actually make this lifestyle part of their home uh, and their community as well. Well, somewhere along the way, Mind you, when they first got here, they was excited. There was so much tears in their eyes, love and joy. Somewhere along the way, they got offended. Be it because they watched the way irresponsible brothers and sisters actually take care of stuff. Because they don't, they take care of it. They take care to destroy it. Uh, most people are, are not mature enough and sensitive enough. And I'm going to digress here for a second and get back on. I'll give you an example. If I had ever borrowed something from someone. I have always made sure that I was very meticulous about whatever I used. And I made sure that I always returned it back to them in a better condition than what I received. For instance, if I borrowed someone's vehicle, I don't care how nasty it was. I would wash it, uh, clean the insides, fill up the gas tank, and check the oil to make sure everything is fine. You know the reason why? Because there may be a time later on in life that I may need to use their vehicle again, provided that I, I have already made means and got my own. I've always lived by the motto, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Yet and still, most people, they, they may say that, but they don't live like that. Going back on course again. So I thought about, yeah, it's fine and good for Pastor Dow to make the sacrifice. It's fine and good for Pastor Dow to buy the land. It's fine and good for Pastor Dow 
um, to allow brethren that are with him to come on the land and they all work together in common unity and they were the inception of it. It's fine and good as, as, as long as they are doing all the work and they have made all the sacrifice. Because mind you, many of you before you got the straight way, guess who built all these buildings? The architect of them. Guess who designed these buildings? Yeah, myself and the brethren. Guess who put in the blood, the sweat, the tears, and the labor? And guess who lived in what you call deplorable conditions? What you call morally reprehensible um, buildings and places to live in? I get Pastor Dow, nine years, no running water. Uh, five or six years with a big old hole, nothing but a piece of plastic covering up the back of a $200 trailer that I got. In other words, made the sacrifices. You wasn't here, mind many of you. And many of you still ain't here. But I'm, I want to show you the way humanity is. And I, Pastor Dow made sure that all the saints was taken care of. All of them had a deck, everything. While myself and my family, we took the, the least of all conditions. And when it came around time for me to build a deck for mine, that was good. I put a place in there that was good and well too. But guess who had to do all the work? The same person who did all the work in your place. Myself and the few brethren that we had. And then when I started building my place, um, and of course, you know, every place that we built at the time, it was modern. Doing Everything is doing well. I've had people that we have actually built homes for, refurbished trailers for. And when people come there to stay there, at one time they might have been a guest home or guest room. They're like, wow, look at this place. This is nice. Well, three, four years later, I'm now working on my home. And the people who lived in that place, they trashed the place. The place looked like hell on earth. Um, they were roguish. Uh, they were very unthankful and ungrateful. They were offended. And it reflected in the way that they took care of that home. And we actually, the home had gotten in so bad of a condition that we had to actually condemn it and move it out of the way. That's how bad the place was. When we stuck all those thousands of dollars, labor and love into it just to provide a place for this family. That's the thanks that I got. That's one of the experiences that I got. And while I personally am working on mine, they are offended because my place is being developed now. Mind you, they didn't lift one damn finger to put nothing together. They didn't move the thing in place. They didn't level the trailer. They didn't remodel the trailer. All they had to do was just move into it. And they were all happy and stuff. And over a period of time, because they didn't take care of the things that was given to them, all of a sudden when things start breaking down and Pastor Down, the brother, wasn't rushing to go over there and fix it. And guess what? Now they're offended. And his spirit begins to enter into people. Amazing. And mind you, nobody's paying a mortgage, a light bill, a phone bill, a food bill, a clothing bill on this community. That's what usually happens. You know, I always say a new broom sweeps well. Well, I thought about going out in that field because I know past I would do it to work $35 an hour like that just to be able to harvest some produce. And then I thought, hmm, yeah, that's fine and good as long as Pastor Dow and a few other brothers do it. But I'd be damned if I'm going to go do it myself. In other words, let them go do it, but I ain't going to go do it. But I don't mind reaping the blessings of it. And that's how people are. Or in other words, this is how people would think. Man, that sure is nice for them to say that he will go out there and work for $35 an hour and he would do it. But see, I ain't going to go out there and work for that $35 an hour in that hot sun because when I get finished with it, look at this, I have to turn it all over into the pot. Mind you, don't make the mistake because here at Straightway, people keep a great portion of their their check or their offerings that they actually, some of them, I, 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 I myself am going on the law of trust and kindness that they will take what they need for their family and give the rest of it back to the pot. Mind you, I'm saying I'm trusting this, that's what they're doing. I can only hope that that's what they're doing. And the one thing that I do, listen to me very carefully, pastors, listen to me very carefully, elders. The one thing that I do 
is I always make sure I remove the excuses away from people so there's no room for excuses. So when everything is all said and done, all they have left if a, is a fence if they do not possess an excellent spirit. In other words, I take away the excuse. You can't say that you ain't never lived here and didn't have a pocket full of money. Now, what you've done with your money, after you've got it, is another story. But why is this all fine and good for Pastor Dow to um, make money, to receive offerings, and it's okay as long as I give it all to the pot? And it takes, in, in my own home, it takes me less than $300 a month just to provide for my own little family to get you know, um, stuff that we like to eat. We like to eat salmon on days that we're eating at home. Um, organic rice, brown rice, you know, about a boatload of oatmeal uh, every once in a while, buy some brewskis and keep it in here and stuff. But see, and, and that's good. You follow me? But as long as Pastor Down, as long as the elders and brothers uh, are out here, they're doing all this labor and they're turning over everything, it's fine and good. But when you have to turn it over and give all, all of a sudden, there's a damn offense. And all of a sudden, the way that you came, the gleam and joy in your eye, all of a sudden the light that was light, all of a sudden it becomes darkness inside of you. And then all of a sudden you get offended. Uh, for instance, uh, before a lot of brethren come to this community, and this is how we operate here. Uh, it's obvious when you come to straightway, we live a very simple life. But before anybody got here, when you, we're dealing with the old guard. And when I say the old guard, I'm talking about people who have been here 15 plus years. The old guard. Watch this. Pastor Dow did the trash runs, Elder Doug. Elias. We ran shifts. And done wood in the winter time to make sure that the um, dining hall had a fire going. Mm -hmm. We done wood runs. I can't tell you how many times not only did we do wood runs. We used to hook up our truck and our trailer. Drive all the way to Kentucky. Load up Pastor Dow. Driving and loading. And then come back here and unload the wood and give it to the homes. Hmm. See, just because you wasn't here doesn't mean that business don't go on as usual because straightway is set up in such a manner. I say straightway because, and I watch this. How many years have all of you been listening to me and yet I'm giving you all the wisdom and all the knowledge you need to know and yet you're still nowhere near where I was at the first four or five years of being in this phase. I'm talking you brother. Because within the first four or five years, I knew how to frame. I knew how to lay blocks. I knew how to, to do roofing. I knew how to do cabinets. I knew how to do run heavy equipment. I invested in myself greatly because I knew that putting this knowledge in me was going to benefit the community of the saints. Myself and the, few, the old guard, we've done all this. And some of you have been listening to me four or five years and you still till today can't do a damn thing. You can't even frame a damn garage, a little 12 by 12 garage. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it from start to finish. And that is a damn shame. It really is. And as a leader, I knew that I have to live by example because if I don't live by example, guess what? It ain't going to be done. Well, guess what? When you come to this community, any of you, when you are allowed to come and live with us and we allow you to become part of us, you become part of our family. When we see that you have talents and you have gifts, you're going to do those talents and gifts and then more. That's what you're going to do. And when you do that, guess what that does? That frees me up. That frees Elder Doug up, the old guard. That frees us up to go do other things that otherwise we would have to extend and put on the back burner to do because there's a lot of things now I shouldn't have to do. For instance, I don't go do wood runs no more. You know the reason why? Because now I have a truck that brings the wood here. And the only thing the brothers have to do now is go get the wood at the pile and put it over at the house. But the old guard, we used to have to get our truck, get our trailer, drive all the way to Kentucky, 25 miles away, load up, spend a couple hours loading it up, come back here, unload it, put it at the places. So, excuse me. If I'm not going to accept anybody's sorry ass mummering and complaining about anything, 
Sorry, you ain't going to get nothing from me at all. And mind you, we're in our 30s and 40s doing this, and there are people that will come to communities younger than this, and you, everybody, you better be careful and watch out for these lazy people that produce nothing. You don't have to bring in an extraordinary amount of money. What you need to do is be productive. That's what we're looking for. And you watch sisters, they come in, they, they, they sweep well, next thing you know, they're lazy as hell. They, 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 they got excuses for everything. They're sick, they can't do nothing. You got brothers, they come in, they're all happy, then later on they get offended. And no matter, no matter what ransom, no matter what you do to try to bend over backwards to appease these people, you can never appease them. You know why? Because their satisfaction of fulfilling their lust at that time it only, it's just like a piece of candy. It tastes good in the mouth just for a little while, and then it dissolves, and then all that is left is the aftertaste of bitterness. That's how people are. That is humanity for you one-on-one, -on -one. and that's the reason why a lot of people lose heart and can't live on communities. It's not that, um, because see here, we remove all the excuse, all the excuse um, from people. <clears throat> I've had people... Talk about, well, you know, we live in like, uh, blah, blah. and I told him, I said, you know, the day is coming that there will hardly ever even be a trailer on this land. And you know what? That day is here. There's hardly even a trailer on this land that people live in. As a matter of fact, people actually live in more solid home buildings than trailers now. There used to be a time we was living in trailers. Now, we it's them totally flipped. The whole script is flipped. And you know what we're still doing? Working to develop that. See, I can go out and buy the building material because I can get a 10% discount at places I go because of my military experience. I show them my veteran um, uh, ID, poof, there it is, and guess what? They give me 10%. So why should I send somebody else to go make the runs when they can't get a 10% discount? Makes sense, don't it? So you'll get people that, oh, they don't mind passing down saying him go out there, but I'm not going to go out there to California. I'm not going to go out there and, 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 and work in that hot sun just to turn over the whole paycheck and all I'm going to do is get back a little bit. Let me tell you something. At Straightway, the old guard, there used to be a time that, that nobody got nothing and nobody received anything for years uh, because we all put it in the pot. I even, we even made a general community store that if you need anything, you just go there in that store and get it. We bought and purchased everything. All you had to do was go get it. And then later on, we say, okay, good. We, we, we uh, give people $50 a month. And, and then I started relaxing a lot of things because we started to develop. And I'm not so sure that relaxing a lot of these things did not make us as a people worse. Because I'm for sure that with some people, with the ungrateful and unthankful spirit, it did not make them better, but it made them worse. And this is what you have to deal with humanity. You see, the Bible teaches no matter what state you're in, there will be content. But you can't be content if you're looking out at someone else thinking that they're, they're getting more than you are and that they're getting a greater advantage than you are or they're being taken care of better than you are and you feel like that you are not being taken care of, your needs are not being met, especially when you said nothing and never made your request No. You see, this is humanity. This is the stuff we're talking about. We can get you out of the world, but it's hard getting the world out of you. That's self-death. That has to come on self-affliction. So I'm sorry. I don't listen to a bunch of sorry excuses and especially offended people. I watch people come through here, tears in their eyes. Give it a year or two, now they're all offended. i got to do everything. Oh, let's go back again. If you got to do everything, and if you had to do everything, where were you at when we were doing everything? And if I detect and see somebody getting offended because I had one guy years ago, I was in the house, and it was wintertime, and they were out doing wood runs. I had a man, Eric Funt, come knock on the door. Uh, what are you going to do? Man, I, what I want to do is wrap my hands around his little skinny pencil neck. And, and then, but I said to him, I said, are you out of your damn mind? I said, I tell you what, as long as you're here, I ain't doing nothing. But I will tell you this. When you go put your feet under that table in that dining hall, who built it? That roof over your head where you're staying at, who built it? 
that stove that's in there, who set it? Who went and got the wood for you to be able to sit in there and stay heated? Those clothes that you're wearing now, who? When you gave your offering of $7,000 and now you're leaving, I gave you back five, four or five, and then I turned around and sent you the rest. Most times when you go place, people don't give you nothing back. And I learned from that too. So when people come here, I, I, you, you're fortunate if I give you anything. I normally usually give people something. Well, probably half of what they came with. But see, you never hear these sides of the story. You never ever do. But you're quick to go out there and hear one side. And the Bible teaches, uh, one witness shall not rise up against another, but out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. But every word is established when you when you are offended and you hear somebody else offended speak, and you don't even want to hear this side. Because when I speak, all mouths are going to stop. Every one of them going to be shut up and they ain't going to answer. Just like you hear with this Tatum situation. You know, his mouth is shut up and stop now because you found him to be a liar. I ain't even got to say now. I got people that testify against him himself, regardless of what they say. I invested five years, hours on end, almost four times a week speaking to this young pastor on telephone to develop him. And this is the things I end up getting. He goes out and get, falls into sin, iniquity, and transgression. I check him on it. Next thing you know, I'm at fault, right? No, no, you ain't going to run dirty and live in this community. I don't care what the world thinks. The court of public opinion, see, that's one thing, a strong point about Pastor Dow. I really, truly don't give a damn what people think outside this community, especially when you're not my brother and sister and you're not with me in this labor because you've added nothing to me. So it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, am I you getting what I'm saying? Well, you're my brother and sister in this faith right here. You and me, you got a friend. You got a friend, a lifetime friend. So I've had experiences, and some of you, when you you got to realize when you get here, or if you get an opportunity to go to a community, you're brand new in this. All these things and challenges that you're dealing with in your heart, we've already done done it. Been there, done that. I already know. I can tell the face. I can tell the eyes. I can see the attitude. All of that, you ain't telling me nothing. There is wisdom in experience. So as long as Pastor Dow is giving everything, as long as the old guard is giving everything, it's fine. But when you come, all of a sudden, <clears throat> you don't have to give everything. There used to be a time on this land that nobody had access to the internet but me. Now everybody has access to the internet. Amazing, isn't it? There used to be a time on this land nobody had cell phones but me. Well, no, why? Because I'm the one doing all the running. Now, almost everybody has cell phones. There used to be a time that the children didn't even have games, video games. Now they all have them. See, when you make sacrifices, that's exactly what it is. It's a sacrifice. But then as you start to prosper, you're hoping that there will be a gratefulness. You're hoping that there will be a thankfulness that will overcome the people when they see where we've come from and where they're at now. But usually what happens too many times more often than not is that the more you give people, the more ungrateful that they get. Now somebody tell me why is that so? Things that you never ever had in life, you come to this community, all of a sudden they supply to you and for you, and then all of a sudden you got a damn attitude problem? Oh, you out of your mind. Y'all see the way I preach? You see the reason why I preach the way I preach? Because not only do I preach it, but I live it. I've been there. I've done it. I've got the experience, and now I'm sharing it with you. What do you think now? You see, as long as I'm turning in everything, everything is fine and good. But it ain't fine and good when the brother never turn in everything. If they do, they do it with such a heavy spirit. You know what I mean? You, you, you'll go out and, and, and you know it's payday and you know we need to buy building material, but all of a sudden you forget to pick up your check. All of a sudden you forget to turn it in. You didn't forget. You got an offended ass spirit. That's your problem. And you're sorry as hell as an individual and you don't care nothing about the whole. It's all about you. It's all about you and your selfish ass self. That's what it is. How you like me now? See, ain't nobody getting by. Ain't nobody getting by. You have to endure indignities. You have to do endure insults. 
You have to have family members saying all type of disparaging comments against you. You have to hear them talk about you, ostracize you, cast your name out as done, call you all type of cults, fanatics, crackpot, kooks. You don't lost your mind while they still are whoremongers. While they're still adulteresses, while they're drunks. And then, of course, I heard today, well, we fall in our own heart. I bet you are in your wicked ass self. Do you know that your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked? And you damn so don't know it. You wicked as hell if you fall in your own heart. Period. I think I said enough to piss off everybody today. <laughs> That's community experiences number three. That's a reality check. And pastors, all of you out there that listen to me, and elders, make sure you play this for all the people so they can get a well-rounded perspective from Pastor Dow's point of view. Hallelujah. Have a good weekend. Shabbat shalom. The king is coming.